Okay, welcome to another video. I thought what we could do today is take a look at some of the newest features and improvements that have made their way onto the latest version of Linux Mint Cinnamon, which is now on version 20.1. We're installed natively and the ISO size is around about 1.9 GB. I've made some notes of the features that excite me the most and I thought we could take a look at them together. So we're using the kernel version of 5.4.0-58 generic and we're now using a more up-to-date version of Cinnamon of version 4.8. Okay, so starting with Cinnamon in general, and the application launcher itself has seen some improvements in this newer version, specifically the search. It will now filter your search results based on relevance, which should mean nine times out of 10, it is gonna give you the correct thing that you are searching for. Moving on to your default file manager, which is of course in Nemo on Cinnamon, and this actually excites me probably more than it should as someone who often loses files that he later needs to rely on. We could now favorite files for easier retrieval later on. So what we're gonna do is try and favorite these two files here and see how it manages all of that. So we should just be able to right click and show the context menu here. So we don't have the option just straight on the desktop, but if we go into Nemo and then go into our desktop folder here, we should be able to do a right click and as you can see, we can add two favorites. So what we're gonna do is add both of these files to the favorites and see how it organizes all of that. So we're gonna highlight both of these files, right click and go to add to favorites. So as you can see, it's now given us a new bookmark here under my computer called favorites and jumping to there, will then show you your favorite files that you have just favorited. Now, as you can see down at the bottom right, it's also given us a star here and it will also populate this little menu here of all of your favorite files as well. And it should also be inside of your application launcher which it is as you can see just under preferences we have favorites there as well as well as the option to favorite files Nemo will also now show thumbnails for files up to the size of 64 GB and the file roller now supports a ZSTD compression the newest versions of Linux Mint 20.1 also come with a couple of new applications the first one being an IPTV player so it's called hypnotic so we're going to go ahead and open that up and see how that all works I'm going to make sure I'm muted so I don't get any weird copyright strikes and what this is, is a little application that will let you view live TV as well as videos on demand. So it comes with a free sort of provider of IPTV. So we're going to jump straight into TV channels and see how this all works. So we can select quite a few here. So let's look for one for the United Kingdom. Here we go, UK, and it's got 95 results. So let's just full screen this and see how it all works. So we have our channels to the left. So I can see BBC News, BBC One Scotland, Comedy Central, so we should just be able to click on any one of these and it then should load the live, live feed. And it has indeed. So we won't stay on anything too long because I don't want any weird copyright strikes on my channel. So let's go back. But as you can see there, there is a lot of different providers for the different countries here. So we have United Kingdom. We even have Iceland there with five channels and France of 76. So you should find most of you are covered there. And then we could also have movies and series as well. So what we're gonna do is close that and now move on to another application that is new in this version and one that I find quite useful myself, which is the Web App Manager, simply called Web Apps. So we saw this in the latest video that I did with Manjaro and it's now made its way onto Linux Mint as well. So what we're gonna do is press this little plus button here and it's now gonna give us the option to create a little application icon to launch in its own little window, almost as if it was a desktop application. So we're going to test it out with a couple of different things. So we're going to call the first one Tyler's Tech and we're going to do it so it launches straight into the Tyler's Tech YouTube channel and we'll see how that works. So we're going to go www.youtube.com slash Tyler's Tech now and it will also let you choose the category of where you want it to appear in your application launcher. So let's test it with sound and video. And we're gonna keep this icon here so it will pull the icon from the website itself, but you can go into it and change it as well. So let's just press cancel on that and we're gonna leave it with the one that it has pulled. And if you have more than one web browser installed, you could then also choose which web browser it's gonna utilize. We've only got one installed at the moment, which is Firefox, but we're gonna get into web browsers later on in this video. So we could also choose whether we want to display the navigation bar or not. So now we're gonna press okay. So that's now created the Tyler's Tech application from the web app. So we should be able to type in Tyler. And as you can see there, it has now appeared in our application launcher under Tyler's Tech. Now let's go into the sound and video and it has correctly organized it in the correct category of sound and video. So let's open this up and see how this all works. 
and there we go so we've got our own little tireless tech youtube web application what more could you want so you can also pin this to your panel here like so and it will also appear in your app um, sort of your alt tab switching with all your other applications along with a nice preview window as well so let's test this out of a different website so this time for all of you facebook lovers out there let's do it with facebook so www.facebook.com oh on the wrong part so we're going to go www.facebook.com and there we go so it's pulled a nice little icon there square of the rounded edges so we're going to leave it on that icon there category we're going to leave it in internet this time leave the browser as firefox and press ok now we're going to search for it again in our application launcher so facebook and now it'll open up facebook in its own little window and then much like what we just did with the tireless tech youtube channel we can of course pin it to our panel and again it will also appear in your application switching in your alt tab switcher very handy little application especially if there's something that you use that there's not a native application for in linux you could probably get away of using a web app for most cases okay so moving on to web browsers and something that should make a lot of you chromium web users are very happy we can now install chromium from the native repos so if we open up the synaptic package manager as you can see there, we have got Chromium, the web browser, on the latest version of 87.0.4280. So what we're going to go ahead and do is install that now and make sure that all works as it should as well. Okay, so we're all installed and we should just be able to go and open up a nice fresh installation of the Chromium web browser. And we could even set it up as our default. So as that's now installed, we can jump back into the web app application and we should be able to now change the internet browser to Chromium. As you can see there under browser, we now have two choices, Firefox and Chromium. So let's now test that out and launch that. And that will now open up the new web app using the Chromium web browser. Okay, so we're now in the login screen. And as you can see in the top right where the clock is displayed, we are using the default look, but we can actually customize the formatting now for our clock for our login window. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so in system settings, we're gonna scroll all the way down until we find login window. And we're gonna get prompted for a password. But then after that, we can customize the look and feel of our login window. So we're going to go straight over to settings. And as you can see here, under clock format, we can change the format of the clock. So by default, it's in the hours and minutes. And if you just hover over it, they do direct you to a quite useful website to help you with that formatting. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. So we're on the website now. So let's say we wanted to use it in this kind of format. We'll click that and then it will then give us the format that we need to use. So we're going to copy and paste that straight over into our login window box here for clock format and then we're going to close that go into the login window and then see how it looks with the new format and as you can see the clock is now displaying it in that nice new format that we have just set there's also been some changes made to the way printing and scanning is going to be done on this newest version of linux mint 20.1 and it's dropped the older protocol it was using in linux mint version 20 which was the IPP USB. You can still, however, go ahead and install that if that was working for you. However, I did hear that it was creating more issues than what it solved. Okay, so moving on to some other small features and improvements that have made their way into this latest version of Linux Mint 20.1. So we're gonna start with the default text editor that you do get of Linux Mint Cinnamon, which of course is Z version 2.8.4. It now comes with the ability to automatically close brackets depending on the type of file that you are currently editing. So we're in a plain text file right now of a new document and you'll notice when we open a bracket, nothing's really going to happen there. So it's not going to close those brackets at all, no matter how many times you try it. But then if you're on like a source file or a config file, for example, we're on our bash RC file, pressing the open bracket will automatically put one on the other side of it, closing that bracket for you, which is a very handy small little feature that it didn't have before. Now moving on to picks, we now have a new filter, which of course is going to be rating, which you can see right here under filters. Moving on to the X viewer, you can now customize the functions of the mouse wheel. So if we go into edit, go into preferences and then go all the way over to mouse, as you can see here, we now have more options that we can do assigned to our mouse scroll wheel. Again, very handy little feature. So they've also made some improvements to the default media player that you will get with Linux Mint 20.1, which is of course celluloid version 0.20. It now features hardware video acceleration enabled by default out of the box. Now to complete the newest version of Linux Mint 20.1, we also have a nice selection of new artwork to be used as the wallpapers. So let's jump into our desktop preferences and have a look at some of these newest wallpapers. 
So we've got quite a lot here and they look pretty decent to be fair. So let's test out a couple of these. So we've got grass. There we go. I quite like that with the nice greens there. And let's also check out purple. Oh, I really like that as well. That's a nice one with the reflections of the lights on the water there. And let's test out one more. Let's go for swing of life. I quite like the look of that. Do you know what? I really like that. And we're going to be leaving it on that wallpaper for the foreseeable future. Okay, so that concludes my first look at the newest features that have made their way into the Cinnamon version of Linux Mint 20.1. Overall, I think this is a brilliant release with many new features that are going to be quite useful. Specifically for me, I really like the option to favorite files so you don't lose anything important and the web app manager. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. And we even have a new role for all of you Linux Mint users out there. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.